We have more from Pete Williams uh, again outside the Supreme Court. And I understand, Pete, you've got uh, Tom Goldstein from the SCOTUS blog with you. I do. I have one of the nation's leading experts on the Supreme Court and the publisher of the very popular SCOTUS blog website, which was uh, very quick with this decision. Tom, let me ask you, first of all, to break down the vote for us. We know it was on the overall question, it was five to four. But among the five in the majority, yeah. how do they break down on the mandate versus the tax? Uh, well, the mandate is the provision of the statute. Five justices of the Supreme Court agree it's constitutional because it's a tax. Four of them would also say that it was constitutional under the Commerce Clause, but that doesn't really matter. It's all legal theory. The bottom line is that the individual mandate, which is at the heart of the statute, five justices of the Supreme Court agree it's constitutional, and the Affordable Care Act was saved by Chief Justice John Roberts, who, unlike our swing vote, Justice Kennedy, voted to uphold it and say that it was constitutional. So on the uh, whether the mandate is constitutional under the Commerce Clause, which was for the states the big issue, what's the vote breakdown on that? It is, there were five justices who said that it did violate the Commerce Clause, the five more conservative justices of the Supreme Court, but that has no practical effect right. at all. Right. Because we, the question is, did Congress have the power? And Chief, Chief Justice Roberts found a different power. Now, on the Medicaid question, how's the vote breakdown? The vote there is that the Medicaid provision is constitutional if it's read narrowly, uh, and that, too, is, I think, going to be five to four in the end. What the Supreme Court said today is that the big expansion of Medicaid, Congress can give the money to the states, but what it can't do, what it can't do is the big thing the states were worried about, and that is that if a state didn't comply with the conditions on getting the money, Congress would, or HHS would pull out the rug on all the Medicaid money. The Supreme Court said that was unconstitutional. Not a big deal, I think, to the administration because it's never exercised that threat. What it really wanted was to be able to still put the money out there with some conditions, and the states are going to have to comply with those new conditions in order to get the new money, and they certainly will. Let me ask you one other question about the, 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 the part of it where the Supreme Court says the mandate as such is unconstitutional, but not the penalty. So what what is the teeth then? If someone says, I'm not going to buy insurance and I'm not going to pay the penalty, they are going to pay the penalty. That's The thing is this. As a technical matter, you don't have to buy health insurance if you're willing to pay the tax. I think that the administration believes and the insurance companies believe that people will uh, get insurance rather than um, uh, paying the tax. Uh, and so it, it's the case that the, the government's not going to throw you in jail. Right, but that's the thing. If there's no penalty for not paying the well, penalty... Well, there is. There, there is the penalty of the tax, which was always true. The administration always said that the upshot here of not buying health insurance is that you're going to have to pay the tax, and the Supreme Court agreed. But if you don't pay it, you can't be prosecuted, you can't be sued. You can, you can. Yeah, I think that that's not right. The tax is a tax, and you have to comply with the tax. It's not an optional tax. Well, but I, my understanding was that during the debate, yeah. the Congress... Congress said that they didn't want to put any penalties in there for not paying the penalty. Well, a penalty on the penalty, I suppose. Yes. Uh, I, as, as we understand it, what's happened is that the Supreme Court has said that the tax, and the, this is not just a situation, I think, where the mandate was thrown out. The mandate itself is upheld under the taxing power. The mandate so still, still exists in the law, and there is still a consequence to not complying with the mandate, and that is you're going to have to pay this significant material tax. So uh, I think as the law stands now, people can be comfortable and confident, agree or disagree, but just in terms of the outcome, that the court didn't throw out even the mandate piece of this. They upheld the mandate under the taxing power. They didn't just uphold the penalty. Okay, very good. Very subtle. Uh, thank you. Tom Goldstein uh, of SCOTUS blog. So you can see that this is uh, a, a, su a subtle decision, would you say, Tom? Uh, it it, it's subtle in its legal reasoning, but I think it's pretty firm in its consequence. Obviously, it's still, it, there's, you know, a huge number of uh, words in the opinion that are still being digested. But our pretty confident impression now is that the administration got what it wanted. It had a backup theory for upholding the individual mandate. It said first it was under Congress's commerce power, and they lost that by five to four. But they had that backup theory, and they got the one vote they really needed in Chief Justice Don, John Roberts to uphold the mandate the statute that Congress enacted under the tax power. Now, let me ask you a question that you're no more suited than anyone else to answer, but I'll ask you anyway. Why do you think uh, the Chief Justice...
Justice did this? I think he believed it. Uh, the Chief Justice. There's always that, isn't yes, there? Yes, <laughs> exactly. I don't think this is power politics in any way, although people will want to read it that way. Uh, I think John Roberts decided, what he says in his opinion is, my job as a Justice of the Supreme Court is to make read statutes as constitutional if I can. And I can't sustain this under the commerce power, but I can find a way under the taxing power, and that's my job. My job is not to go out there and strike things down whenever I can. It's also very interesting that the dissent here is very polite and cordial. They are not jumping up and down, screaming about lawlessness. They, I think, too, don't think this is necessarily the most obvious case. Uh, so it was a closed case, but the administration got what it wanted. So just to ask the obvious question, some will wonder whether the chief made this a five uh, 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 or joined the majority so that it wouldn't look like the usual partisan split. Yeah. Uh, I don't think so. Uh, it's certainly the upshot that a conservative Republican appointee, Chief Justice of the United States, has written the opinion that saved the principal legislative accomplishment of President Obama does give, I think, probably the public a lot of confidence in the result. But if he really believed it was unconstitutional, I think he would have pulled the trigger.